Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Colin, and I'll be presenting how powerful are performance predictors in neural architecture search. This is joint work with Arbor, Robin, Young, and Frank. Neural architecture search is a very popular area of research in the last few years. Early NAS algorithms from 2016 and 2017 required fully training thousands of architectures. But of course, this is a very heavy computational burden. And that's why recent algorithms use techniques to predict the final performance of architectures before they're fully trained. We call these performance predictors, formally any technique which predicts the final accuracy or ranking of architectures without fully training them. There are many different types of performance predictors, as you can see on the right. For example, there are model-based predictors and learning curve extrapolation methods, which I'll get to in the next few slides. But all of these predictors have two main methods. There is the initialization method, which performs any necessary pre-computation to set up the predictor. And then there's the query method that can take in any architecture as input and then outputs a prediction of that architecture's accuracy. In the next few slides, I'll give a brief overview of the main families of performance predictors. And after that, I'll get into our results, which is the first large-scale study of performance predictors in NAS, where we test 31 predictors across various settings and also show how combining performance predictors leads to even better per performance. OK, so the most popular performance predictor is the model-based predictor. And this is basically supervised learning, where the features are the architecture encoding, and the labels are the validation accuracy of trained architectures. So model-based predictors have very high initialization time because, because you need to create a training set by fully training many neural architectures. Once you create that training set, you can train the model. And once you have the model, you can very quickly query any new architecture to get a prediction of its accuracy. So it has very low query time. So popular choices of the model are Gaussian processes, boosted trees, graph neural networks, and neural networks with specialized encodings. And these methods are so popular because they can easily fit into NAS frameworks such as Bayesian optimization. All right, so sort of the opposite extreme are learning curve-based predictors. And that's because these have no initialization time at all, but very high query time. Because for every individual query, we need to partially train a neural network. So learning curve extrapolation is where we partially train a neural network and then take the partial learning curve and try to extrapolate it to estimate the performance at the final epoch. And that's shown on the right here, where the, uh, the learning curve is fit to a parametric model. Uh, Follow-up work has also used Bayesian neural networks to do this extrapolation. And then we also consider early stopping a learning curve-based predictor, where we just output the validation accuracy after we train for some, uh, some amount of epochs. And recent work also looks at early stopping using the training loss instead of validation accuracy. All right, so we, we can also combine model-based and learning curve predictors. So this is where it's very similar to model-based predictors, but the partial learning curve is used as a feature in addition to the architecture encoding, as you can see on the image on the right. So Baker et al. Uh, used the first and second derivatives of the partial learning curve as features, and, and other work also uses a, a Bayesian neural network with the, with the full learning curve as features. So these have high initialization time because we need to create a training data set and also high query time be because we need to partially train every individual architecture that we query, although the performance tends to be very, very high. All right, so sort of the opposite of, of uh, high query time, high initialization time is low query time, low initialization time. And, and so these are zero cost, 
proxies, which is quite an interesting technique because the idea is to compute a rough estimate of the of the uh, performance of an architecture in just three to five seconds. And this is accomplished by taking a single mini batch of data and performing a single forward and backward pass and then computing statistics on the on the derivative or the or the uh, map of activations. And literature from network pruning has also been adapted to uh, create zero cost proxies for NAS. All right. And the final family is weight sharing. So this is a very popular subfield within neural architecture search, where we train a super network that, that can then be used to evaluate any architecture in the search space, as you can see on the image on the right. Um, so, so there are a few different ways of training the super network or, or uh, creating the set of shared weights that can then be used to evaluate any architecture. And so we consider a couple of these methods. It's worth noting that in recent NAS literature, it's disputed whether uh, evaluation with the shared weights correlates with evaluating each architecture by, by fully training the architectures individually. Although weight sharing methods still work well for NAS as a whole. All right, so now I'll get into our experiments. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we we uh, test 31 different performance predictors across three different axes: initialization time, query time, and performance. In this case, Kendall Tower rank correlation. So just a few notes about our experimental setup. Uh, we use the official implementation for each method whenever possible. We we use training and test sets that were drawn uniformly at random. And we also have experiments later that, that use a mutation-based train and test set. And for the model-based predictors, we perform light hyperparameter tuning for two reasons. Two reasons. The first reason is that it levels the playing field because the official implementations had drastically different levels of initial hyperparameter tuning. And second, cross-validation can often be used inside during the NAS process. So it's more informative to uh, evaluate, to compare them with a uh, hyperparameter tuning. All right, so this 3D plot is quite a lot of information to take in. So what we're going to do now is look at a view from above the plot. And so what's pictured here is that for every individual initialization time and query time setting, we plot the best predictor out of all 31. For example, in the bottom right here, XGBoost achieved a Kendall Tau value of 0.73, which was better than all the other 30 predictors we tried. So we created these plots for NASBench 101, NASBench 201, with all three uh, data sets, CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, and downsample and ImageNet, and the Dart search space. And some of the trends were we saw for almost all the search spaces. For example, some of training losses always did pretty well in the high query time setting. The zero cost proxies worked very well uh, for all search spaces except for darts. And the graph convolutional network and semi-NAS performed well uh, in the low query time setting, except in the highest initialization time setting Surprisingly, boosted trees started to outperform these uh, more specialized methods. All right, and the one the one search space that looks quite different from all the others is NASBench 101, and that's because bananas seem to dominate almost half the uh, the graph. So we looked into that and found that. The NASBench 101 search space is much more complex than the other two search spaces because uh, the other two search spaces had much more regularity. They're either cells with complete graphs or exactly two edges on each node. But in NASBench 101, the, the search space is much more complex. And it turns out the path encoding is very well suited to handle the, the diversity in the search space. 
So what we did is we applied the path encoding from bananas uh, to some of these other predictors like boosted trees or Gaussian processes. And then this enabled these methods to achieve much stronger performance, even outperforming bananas. Next, uh, we, we plotted other metrics. In addition to Kendall Tau, we looked at sparse Kendall Tau, Pearson correlation, and Spearman rank correlation. And as you can see, we only we saw very minor differences between all the methods. So we, in the rest of the talk, I'll continue to focus on uh, Kendall Tau. All right, so next we looked at mutation-based train and test sets. So rather than drawing the architectures uniformly at random, we used uh, mutation-based train and test sets drawn from uh, a few seed architectures, which more closely models the distribution that might be seen in an actual NAS experiment. So this is a more challenging setting because the architectures in the test set are very similar to one another. And so the model-based predict uh, predictors in particular achieved lower performance and, and boosted trees perform comparatively better in this setting. Other than that, we saw largely the same trends as before. All right, so motivated by the fact that it seemed that each family of predictor kind of focused on one area of these plots, we decided to ensemble them in a very simple way. So we combined, uh, we added some of training losses and Jacobian covariance as features uh, with the ng-boost model-based predictor. Uh, so this is like a very simple method of, of uh, combining three predictors from three different families. And what we saw is that now, now this, this predictor, which we call Omni, achieved consistent performance almost everywhere, rather than uh, uh, the predictors only doing well in certain areas of the plot. Um, so th this uh, worked very well for all search spaces except for darts, and that's because zero-cost proxies don't work well on darts. And Omni also achieved 20% performance improvement versus the next best predictor in, in some settings, in low query time setting. And that's because it, it really helps to use these extra features with, uh, with model-based predictors. We also ran an ablation, and we showed that surprisingly, some of training loss plus Jacobian covariance by itself achieve pretty consistent performance. But to achieve the 20 to 30% improvements, we needed to add an NG boost. All right, and finally, we looked at NAS experiments. So we took all 16 model-based predictors and added them to popular NAS frameworks like Bayesian optimization and predictor-guided evolution. And we found that the best predictors here pretty closely aligned with the, the with our early experiments, uh, the best predictors in the low query time, medium in initialization time setting. Specifically, semi-NAS and GCN worked quite well, followed by uh, boosted trees. We tested two versions of Omni uh, in our NAS experiments, Omni MGBoost consistently outperformed just MGBoost by itself, and Omni SemiNAS was able to exploit SemiNAS to often achieve top performance. So uh, we ran many different experiments here, and we saw largely the same trends across all of our experiments. And here they are all summarized in one graphic. Uh, we also showed that combining predictors leads to the best performance, and for very complex search spaces, specialized encodings perform the best. So to conclude, we give the first large-scale study of performance predictors by comparing 31 predictors across four families, and we showed that combining different families of predictors leads to the best performance. All of our code is available at this link. Thank you.